Okay, my name is Donna Yates and um, I am in arts, 20% in uh, history of art, and 80% of me is in the social sciences. I'm at the Scottish Center for Crime and Justice Research, which is positioned within sociology. And uh, I'm an archaeologist and what I do is study art and antiquities crime. So smuggling, looting, that kind of stuff, fakes, forgeries. And what I want to talk about today is um, exactly why I wanted to make the, the online program that I did and that is running now. Um, but taking this theme of transitions, thinking about how um, uh, we've designed a program that allows students to transition to online learning, um, but also kind of through online learning uh, as they kind of progress up, up their learning scale, if you, if you will. Um, so uh, going back to the very beginning, um, I want to say that the, this program that I'm going to talk about, which um, is, uh, you'll see the whole structure in a moment, it's based off of my personal research and the research of several colleagues here at the University of Glasgow and um, a number of other universities. So um, it's, it's very much research-led um, teaching. And what happened is in 2012, uh, Simon McKenzie, who was here at Criminology, uh, got a large ERC grant to study the illicit trafficking of antiquities throughout the world. And I joined as well with uh, Leverhulme. And that became the Trafficking Culture Project. Um, we're now an international research consortium, that's what we're calling ourselves. And I, I think we've done some, some really interesting work on this. Um, it's gotten a lot of media coverage, for example. Um, and because of the coverage of this and, and kind of the prominence of this work, especially after basically what happened in Syria, which, which happened after um, all of our funding, after we already existed, uh, a, a lot of people became interested in what we were doing and a lot of students became interested in our work as well and were looking for ways to, uh, to, to get into this type of research. So the very first thing we did is um, we created just your traditional master's level module here at Glasgow. Uh, so global illicit trafficking and cultural objects. I've now shorted that to antiquities trafficking to make it a bit easier. And this was um, placed within the criminology master's programs as well as the sociology master's programs. But from the start, we invited students on master's programs uh, throughout uh, social sciences, but also in art specifically, museum studies, archaeology, and art history to join us. And that's, that's been quite popular here. It's, it's, um, it's, I would say it's the most popular master's module on the, the criminology program simply because we get so many students from arts. And it's been running since 2013-2014. Um, and it's, it's, again, it's research-led, it's very timely, and it has high student satisfaction. So basically the, the students like this course because they see how it applies to what's making the headlines in the world. Um, and uh, we have a lot of focus on applying it to practice. But we as a group were thinking about impact, and I was thinking about it especially because um, we have all sorts of ref things coming up and we have um, what was needed through the ERC when it comes to impact. And um, around about 2013, 2014, I was getting a lot of emails from potential students who wanted to study this topic, but didn't have the ability either for personal or professional reasons to come to Glasgow and do it. So thinking on this theme of tr transition, how do you move students who uh, would potentially be an in-person student if they could be but can't, how do you move them to a, a space where they can get the same benefit that um, other students have? Well, the first thing we did is, um, and I say we, and when I say we, I should say that's, that's Vicky and that's John Kerr who you're going to, to hear from later today. Um, we, we created a free online course. We created a MOOC with FutureLearn. Um, and we called it Antiquities Trafficking and Art Crime. Um, it's three weeks long, and though I didn't put a link to it here, it starts again next week. So if any of you are interested in learning about antiquities, trafficking, and art crime, if you Google those words, you'll, you'll find us. And 
it, it went very well. So um, how we've structured it is um, we've structured it into three weeks, antiquities trafficking first week, art crime the next week, so that's more crime related to paintings and sculptures, so forgeries and heists and vandalism. And the third week is about the return of cultural objects, so it's repatriation, recovery, return. So think about uh, uh, works taken during the Holocaust and how those go back, or indigenous communities looking for the return of their cultural objects. And we have a series of very approachable um, lessons for them online. And it's shot at a, a general public level, so basically um, you and your grandma can take it, it's fine. So we have um, a series of little case studies. So this one is about a tradition on the north coast of Peru of looting archaeological sites during Easter week, which is pro projected back to the time of the conquest. So challenging the idea that looting cultural objects is always bad. Maybe it's a, a cultural activity. Uh, this is Simon McKenzie, who I mentioned before, uh, talking about white collar crime, so very criminology type stuff. Um, we have little fun activities, so this is where they, they try to be a forensic art investigator. They're given cases and they have to, to think about which technique they might use to explore what's dubious about these paintings. Um, and then they're, they're given kind of <coughs> controversial uh, cases to discuss and debate amongst themselves. So this one's around the idea, is street art vandalism or is it art? Um, so it, it, it's been interesting and fun. And it's also, because it's an interesting topic, received a lot of press coverage. And um, kind of two types of press coverage. So uh, coverage about the online course, again, it's timely and interesting. But also, um, we've been getting press coverage from reporters who've taken the online course, and that's the, the Economist article, that have then covered our research because they took the online course because they were introduced to it. So, very positive for us from an impact standpoint. Um, and in the very first run, uh, nearly 11,000 students or people joined the course. Um, that's a bit of a misleading number because not all of those people necessarily took the course. Um, and the fifth run, like I said, is about to start uh, on Monday. But it, to, to, to kind of get around that uh, uh, misleading number, this again, this is our uh, first run in February of 2016. Um, we had nearly 2,000 visits to each of, or to the activities. So the activities were interacted with, uh, sorry, 200,000 times. Um, they were completed uh, 167,000 times and uh, nearly 26,000 comments were posted. Again, all on this very first run. So you're getting, we're getting a lot of really excited interaction about this. And for us as academics who are, um, again, trying to, to have uh, impact be quantifiable um, in a variety of ways, this is nice quantifiable impact right there. So we were able to reach the public in quotation marks. But what became clear about this, this, um, this free online course is that we've also been able to reach policymakers, practitioners, and other academics. So recently I was at a meeting at UNESCO and the whole cultural wing of UNESCO had basically taken our online course. Mm -hmm. And I can report just today, I just checked my email, uh, I'm doing a bit of research on museum security and ideas of terrorism. And I've emailed several museum security head chiefs and to, to ask for interviews at a, a very rough time to be um, interviewing about terrorism. <coughs> and one just got back to me this morning saying, sure, I'll talk to you. I took your MOOC. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Great for the research. I should be talking about students, but um, it, th this is a transition for me as well, like using this type of online learning as, as both a research tool and as a, as a, a tool for um, creating a, a better impact for my own research. Transitions is the theme. But coming out of this, and, and this, this is something that we thought about from the start, and again, thanks to Vicky, thanks to everybody at Teaching and Learning, and thanks, thanks to John Kerr, um, that, that a, a short MOOC wouldn't be enough for all students, because we're still thinking about the students who want professional qualifications from this. And, and those were the people who were mostly represented who were originally emailing me. So uh, through wonderful funding from BOLD, I'm one of the BOLDers, 
um, we created uh, this three-course PDRI cert in antiquities, trafficking, and art crime. So 60 credits, 20 credits each, and each one of these courses is um, placed within sociology. And each one of these courses, though it's meant to appeal to distance learners, um, all of our in-person students can elect to take them as well. And we've had um, not very many this time around because I'm, I'm still teaching an in-person version of the course, but we have had some students from criminology and art history elect to take the online course, though they've, of course, though they've been local to Glasgow. So to tell you a little bit about how this course is structured, well, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's three P PGT modules. They run in autumn, spring, and summer. I have one running now, and indeed I have to leave early because it's running. Um, and uh, they're, they're, they're structured a lot like traditional lectures because I have, uh, every week there are recorded lectures. They're, they're broken up into about 15 minute segments, but really they're the same lecture I would give um, here. Um, but the students also create digital presentations. They take a case study, they record it, um, they present it, and they do some peer marking on that. And um, I, I do moderate the peer marking, I should say. Uh, they have a number of different types of activities that appear every week that relate to the lecture and their reading. Um, they have message boards, which yeah, they, I, I'm not sure. I, I didn't know that there was a 30 minute delay, and I wonder if that's kind of um, putting people off, though they, they do tend to use their message boards mostly to share things that they've found in the news or the media about our topics. So that, that does come up very often. Um, but what we do use is um, every week we have a live seminar on Slack. We actually have two live seminars. So Slack is, is a, a, a program that if um, you're not familiar with it, it's, it's basically a, a chat program. Um, and it's uh, available on phone or tablets or anything like that. And um, uh, I'll, I'll show you it in a second. So um, this, is, this is, again, this is how we're billing the course, you know, delves into the seedy gray market for stolen cultural objects, you know, very exciting. Uh, you have a, 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 a head from Iraq that's being sent back. Um, this, is, this is what one of the courses looks like on Moodle, so nice bright pictures because um, it's a very visual topic. Um, but within each of these, they get, they get all of their, um, their course activities and their lectures, and they're, they're kept together in, in specific themes. And this is roughly what a Slack seminar looks like. Um, don't focus too closely on that because I didn't ask the students if I could put that up there, but I don't think they're saying anything controversial. Um, so uh, twice a week, um, at two different times um, per week, we just have a live chat where we discuss the issues um, within the lecture. It's like having a, a seminar that's real time. And um, originally, uh, we were thinking about having this done via video, but we ended up with too many students for that. And um, the students have really quite liked using Slack um, for a number of reasons, and some of the feedback they've given on it is they like the flexibility of it. Um, some of the students have uh, joined from trains or doctor's offices and various places. That secretly at work is very popular. <laughs> um, and, and, and for me, it's been very useful as well because I, I also end up, for my research, travel a lot. So I've, I've done Slack seminars from inside UNESCO, from uh, the airport in Singapore, various places like that. And you know, I could be doing it right now on the phone. I actually did one in a faculty meeting. But, um, <laughs> um, but also the students who uh, uh, are, are a little um, shaky on their English and such a rapid pace type thing, like if we were in a, a seminar discussion in this room, they have Google Translate open next to the Slack um, uh, chat and if they're unsure about a word that I or somebody else says they look it up and then feel confident to to come back into the discussion and that's been very positive so um, we have 30 students currently enrolled and that's quite good because the target was 15 so that's done really well and um, they, they they're very satisfied with the program um, they, they, they rate it um, really quite high, um, basically just as high as the in-person students rated similar programs, so that, that's very good. And um, as well, this, this program has also gotten a bit of media coverage as well. 
Um, and from this point, and this is where I think things can, can be really quite interesting for other programs at Glasgow as well, is that um, we, we're able to, for, for students who are really enjoying this, again, we started at the, the free online course, we've moved to uh, a, a distance, uh, very part-time, paid uh, PG cert. Um, we've had a number of students who really want to top up their learning and move on to full programs here at Glasgow. And again, this was part of the plan, um, but it's something that students have been taking up. So, um, so their, their options include um, taking one of several um, Glasgow MSc programs in art history, in um, criminology, because they're a third of the way done. Um, there's a bit of variety there on subject. Um, PhD programs are a, an option because they have a relationship with us, and that's certainly come up. And what's been interesting is that through several, um, and, and we're seeing opportunities for professional collaboration because all of this is related to my research. I'm using it through my research. And several of the people who've elected to take various levels of this program are professionals themselves. So it looks like we will be entering into a partnership with Scottish police for training of police officers for heritage crimes because one of my students is a Scottish police officer and he's created a heritage task force since this course started. Scotland's first, so there we go. Well done. Um, and and I, I see uh, more opportunities for that coming up. And if you drop down to the, the, the MOOC level, those opportunities have already come up. It, it's, it's like a calling card. If I go places, people know who I am and what I'm about because they've already seen it. And thinking about this transition, this transition from distance online learning to what at this point the only option is in-person learning, so a bit of a different transition, um, it's clear that what we've been doing has been popular and the students feel supported to do it. So out of the 30 PG CERT students, four have already been admitted to University of Glasgow PhD programs. They'll be starting in September. Um, two are in the process of applying, so we'll see how that goes. And several others have inquired about it. Um, three are in the process or have already applied to full MSc programs, so they're going to top up and do the remainder of their courses and then um, do their dissertation as part-time students, and they're planning on coming here for that. And like I said, one is a new partner uh, in Scottish Police, and these are the ones I know of. Um, there could be more trickling in. And uh, several of the free online course learners skipped the, the um, distance um, uh, PG cert and went straight to MSCs this year, so that's fine. And they're really high quality students, and I think that's evident based off of how many have been accepted to PhD programs. So finishing up, not too far over, um, the, the, the idea behind this is that there's something at every level for every student. That a, a student who is interested in this topic can find something at the University of Glasgow that's right for their situation. Um, and so transitions are facilitated. Um, they've, the students get a taste for the course before they commit money or time. So they can, they can try things out in the MOOC and see if they want to be a distance student, see if the topic's right for them. Um, if they're not quite ready for a full master's program to move all the way to Glasgow, they can spend a year slowly working through the, the three um, uh, PG CERT courses. Um, and so they basically know what they're getting. And really what we've been seeing is that community develops even at quite a distance. And we, because this community develops around students who've gone together through the free course into the, the online PG cert and potentially now in, into studying here at Glasgow together, um, we find that this community helps us retain these students and, and convinces them to, to keep going with their studies. And the last thing I'd like to say, especially for anybody in here who's considering developing a program like this, like I said, I got wonderful support from Teaching and Learning, wonderful support from John. Again, you'll hear from John in, in a little bit. But um, I deliver all of these courses myself. So I, I am the lecturer of all three of the PG CERT courses, and um, I, I did the whole MOOC myself. There's no team, it's just me. And that was absolutely fine. And um, the, the support that we have here allows for that. So I think that's all I have. Excellent, thank you.